Canberra's housing performance. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein and let's have a look at this article from Mortgage Business discussing housing performance in the Australian Capital Territory. Now before we go through this, let's jump over to the Property Council data room and we can have a look at some residential information. Let's look at the median residential house value and we can see Canberra is above the average at 685,000. It's below Melbourne at 730 and below Sydney at 930,000. But all us plebs down the bottom below average, you know, it's much worse than us. I mean, look at Adelaide, they're at 462. That's almost getting at a point where it's a reasonable mortgage. Almost. Almost. Units in Canberra are below the weighted average at 440, but, you know, Sydney is just pulling it up to insane levels at 710. And one thing you have to realize, everyone, with this, you know, it's all to do with the location. This chart here is just showing unit price growth across Sydney. You've got the Red Rooster line there, the you know less affluent suburbs out the west, and the more affluent ones along the coast, which is understandable. So, yeah. And Canberra, I mean, what's Canberra got? It's just inland city, a bit cold. House rents. Canberra is the highest at $580 per week. Per week. This data is from the 30th of April. The average is 457 so you can see why all those politicians needing to rent there, all the public servants needing to rent there. You know, may, maybe, I wonder, because can't they claim a portion of their rent? Maybe there's an incentive to inflate it. But, you know, I, I'm sure I'm sure our glorious leaders wouldn't do anything like that. Unit rents, highest in Sydney at 530. Just think about that. Just think about that. 530, you can get a house in uh, Darwin and below. So for the price of a unit, you can get a house in every other city except Sydney and Canberra. There you go. There you go. Damn, Sydney's expensive. Canberra is at four hundred and eighty dollars. And the uh, let's look at the price index. We can see here. Let's look at Canberra. 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 And there we go. So it jumped up three point one percent in December, and this other quarter it's gone up again. 0.2%. So with that in mind, with that in mind, let's, oh, but there's one more thing I want to show you, sorry. And this is a chart I always like to, to bring up because I think this is office vacancy rates. This gives us in, insight into the commercial sector. Here's Australia. That's the recession Australia had to have. Let's look at Canberra. What's missing? So it's, it's a different sector. And some people are arguing that it's insulated from other parts of the economy. If anything, if there's more government spending, more government stimulus. You know, how many of you have invested in Canberra? So the ACT dwelling market has outperformed other capital cities during the pandemic, but a delayed downturn may be on the way, according to CoreLogic. The Property Research Group has reported that the ACT housing market has been the clear winner among Australia's states and territories during the pandemic increasing 1.3% in value between the end of March and the end of July. This came even as national housing values declined by 1.4% in the same period. Eliza Owen, head of research at Australian, uh, sorry, head of research Australia at CoreLogic, noted that the cash rate dropped by 25 basis points in March, which traditionally would lead to an uptick in house prices. She quoted research from the RBA, which found that for every one percentage point reduction in the cash rate, property values may increase 8% over the following two years. Now, isn't that interesting if we have a look here? Let's look at let's look at the cash rate, how it's been going down since 2016. Let's have a look here at just, oh, sorry, at this one, foreign investment. Look at the 2016, it's been going down. So we had a huge spike in foreign investment in property, but let's look at our property prices. So, you know, should the RBA be inflating house prices? The problem is, you know, big components of purchasing a house, land, for existing dwellings, isn't counted in CPI. So the RBA is continually missing their CPI targets according to one methodology of measuring it, but according to another methodology, they're definitely hitting it. So is this cash rate that we're seeing here? I mean, here we go. We can look at the uh, oh, CPI changed recently, but that's, uh, that's quite questionable. You know, free childcare for those pensioners, I'm sure, reduce their cost of living. But, you know, is this why we have 
you know, such high property prices. So the pandemic crisis has impacted most states, meaning this trend did not eventuate in any state except for the ACT. So the ACT is seeing this increase in property prices, probably because people are more secure in their employment in Canberra than in other parts of the country. Probably because our political leaders and our civil servant class aren't experiencing the actual economic impact. Their businesses aren't forced to shut down and they're pretty much guaranteed a wage, even if they are. Or if they're told to work from home. Work. Hmm. She explained, while this traditional relationship is being tested by a pandemic, well, by insane government lockdowns, I think, residents across the ACD may be relatively insulated from some of the effects. Part of this may be because recent case numbers have been low or non-existent. As of early August, social distancing restrictions were easing across the territory, and the ACT had gone almost one month without reporting new active cases, Ms. Owen said. While the ACT property market has been on the upward trajectory since August last year and has continued to perform well during the pandemic, Ms. Owens warned that this market may see a delayed downturn as the economic ramifications of Melbourne's second lockdown spread across the country. As a result, prolonged growth in this market may be subject to how quick Australia can suppress new cases and see recovery in the labour market. Well, there's talk now of Victoria continuing their restrictions for another 12 months. Unemployment is sitting at 7.4%. Unemployment and underemployment from the Roy Morgan methodology is 23% of the workforce. We've got job seeker bonuses. We've got job keeper propping up businesses. We've got mortgage holidays in place until March. And we have trading while insolvent. Did I forget anything? Got the free child girl. That's disappearing soon. So yeah, no. Any claims that that, that, that market is on the road to recovery, I find fanciful. Another trend evident in ACT's housing market is that there appears to be two tiers of performance between property values and rent values. While property values continue to rise throughout July, rent values have slumped half a percent since the onset of the pandemic. Ms. Owens attributed this to better conditions across high-paid jobs, in which case people are more likely to buy property and have a mortgage. Investor demand, while already low relative to Australia-wide participation may also be impacted by low rent values, Ms. Owens said. According to the payroll jobs data by the ABS, between the 14th of March and the 11th of July, the volume of payroll jobs increased across financial and insurance services by 0.7% and electricity, gas, water and waste services by 2.9%. Those employed in those sectors are more likely to own a home since these sectors are among the highest typically weekly earnings in of Australian industry. Job losses across many vulnerable sectors such as art and recreation, food and accommodation services more, more acute, dropping by 19.2% and 19.8% respectively. Nearly 20% job losses. However, these sectors only account for 7.9% of the ACT workforce even before the pandemic. Moreover, those working in these sectors are more likely to rent, according to Ms. Owen. So the gap between houses and units... CoreLogic data has revealed that while house values were at a record high in July 2020 across the ACT, having shot up by 8.5% over the year, unit values were 3.6% below the record high where the value of the unit market, when the value of the unit market peaked in May 2010. The median house value was 720000 in July 2020. On the other hand, unit values have performed in line with the recent housing market upswings, sitting 2.7% higher over the year. The median unit value in Canberra was 445. A record 4,427 units were completed in the year to March 2020, as well as April. A further 360 units were set to be completed across the region by the end of October, according to CoreLogic Settlement Risk Data Estimates. The volume of units built in the year to March 2020 was 41.8% higher than the previous year. Just think about that. 41% higher it's not going to bounce back. And 73.8% higher than the decade average completions. There you go. In contrast, completions of new homes fell 6.7% in the year and remained relatively unchanged since the start of the series in 85, according to CoreLogic. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. The ACT's performance and bucking of the housing trend. What do you all think? Are you rushing to Canberra to invest for property? Looks like you're not. 
As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below if you want to support the channel and the work that I do on creating these videos. There's a few ways that you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can use any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.